On behalf of Namita Gokhale, William Dalrymple, and all my colleagues at Teamwork Arts, welcome back to JLF's Brave New World Season Two. Our magazine partner for this series is the week, journalism with a human touch. Our first session of the day is a portrait of an artist, Parish Moiti and Ina Puri in conversation with Kishore Singh. A compelling visual chronicle of one of India's most celebrated contemporary artists, a portrait of the artist in the world introduces us to Parish Moiti, captured by the late celebrated photographer Nimai Ghosh. Writer and art curator Ina Puri has providing the text for this masterpiece capturing the essence of Parish Moiti's work. Parish Moiti is known for his outstanding work in the field of sculptures and watercolors, which has been celebrated the world over. In a conversation with Kishore Singh, Moiti and Puri bring forward the essence of this artistic narrative and discuss the journey of the artist and the history it represents. Parish Moiti was born in 1965 in Tamluk and did his BFA from Calcutta and his MFA from Delhi. Maithi has over 81 solo exhibitions around the world from Sydney, Singapore and Hong Kong to London, Berlin and New York till date. He has been the recipient of many national and international awards, including the Padma Shri from the Indian government. Ina Puri is a writer, art curator, documentarian and collector. She has authored memoirs and edited major publications on contemporary Indian artists. Puri's latest work includes Kolkata by Raghu Rai. She has won the National Award for Meeting Manjeet, a documentary she produced on artist Manjeet Baba. Kishore Singh is a columnist, editor and writer with experience in journalism and publishing. He's also an art writer and curator. Please do remember to ask questions and comment by typing it into the comment section below. And we will send these to Kishore to ask of our speakers at the end of the session. And in case any of you drop off due to bandwidth issues, you know, you can find us on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel, Jaipur Litfest JLF. And of course, if we drop off, just hang in there. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, a portrait of an artist. Parish Moiti and Ina Puri in conversation with Kishore Singh. Kishore, Parish Maiti, Ina Puri, over to you. Thank you, Sanjoy. Thank uh, you, Sanjoy. Uh, wonderful introduction. And thank you for hosting this uh, event uh, on this uh, video and the internet. Uh, this is really going to be a bit of a cozy uh, chat. Uh, I mean, this is really a conversation between three friends. Uh, Porish and I have done a book together. Ina and Porish have done a book together. Uh, there's photography by uh, Nimai Ghosh. I've edited two books uh, with Nimai Ghosh. Here is this fantastic uh, celebration of Nimai Da's art. Uh, unfortunately, uh, a book that comes out posthumously. Uh, it's something that I think he would really have wanted to see, uh, but uh, that that pity, uh, that's a pity that, that there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, I think there's something magical about a photographer like Nemaida, who chose to work with the black and white medium, with the film role, did not go digital, did not use flash photography, etc. For many, many years, for 25 years, actually, he chased uh, Satyajit Ray, photographed him very closely, was known as his bossful. And interestingly, 20 years ago, he began a journey with uh, Parish uh, on a similar venture where he traveled extensively around with him, photographed him, uh, and created an archive, which is surprising in its depth, and shows us uh, facets of Parish that we don't normally get to see Parish uh, is a huge showman, he's a great uh, celebrated artist, etc. But he's also a very intense person. Uh, you don't really see the intimate aspects of uh, Porish uh, very often, very frequently. Uh, I think Nimaida was privileged to be welcomed into that world. And like he photographed uh, Satyajit Ray extensively in his uh, library, in his studio, 
where he met visitors, etc. Parish, of course, guards his studio, uh, doesn't let very many people in, but did allow Nimaida in. So you get a glimpse of uh, Parish working there, but of course, Parish working around the world, Parish oblivious of crowds, Parish relaxing, etc. It's been extraordinary the way you see him come to life. Uh, it's, a, it's a person that you would otherwise find very difficult to uh, engage with. Uh, so I'm going to ask you first, uh, before I come to Porish, uh, Ina, what was it like meeting this Porish from Nemaida's archive of photographs that went into building the book versus the Porish you and I see outside, even though we know him personally, this artist, this painter, who inhabits a world which is so detached and away from uh, what we see around us. Thank you very much, Kishore. Uh, one has been privileged in a sense because I've known Parish now for many, many, many years, over decades, across maybe 30 years or so. And, uh, you know, one has traveled with him, one has uh, seen him work, one has seen him grow into the, uh, into the man he is today. But um, the thing is that with Nimai Ghosh, what was wonderful is that Parish and Nimai Ghosh shared so much because of the fact that I think they spoke the same language, which is very important. You know, uh, when you need to communicate and sometimes it's about intimacy, it's about, it's about sharing moments that you're not comfortable sharing with a lot of other people. It's something else when it comes to one of your own. And I think that was the case. They're both from Medinipur and, uh, you know, similar food habits, which is why they could travel together. They went through the most incredible adventures together. And all of that went into the making of this book. And Parish allowed Nimai Ghosh into this space, which was, which was wonderful because apart from the studio, they were traveling together in the country, across the world. And, uh, and, and what is interesting is that Nimai Kush, for Nimai Kush, everything came to a standstill. He was totally focused on this project. Mind you, it's taken us some seven, eight years. It's like an archive today, looking at Nimai Kush's photographs, looking at Parish Maiti's paintings that are in the book, because it's happened over a period of seven, eight years now. So I think that has been our story essentially. Yeah, I am going to read out, I think, something from the book which, uh, you know, uh, kind of encapsules exactly what you said, uh, where you write, in the very beginning of this journey, Porish and Nemaida had grown so close that each understood the other without the need for words. Both have had long and similar careers. Both began with an initial period of struggle and had been outsiders looking in. I think that's, uh, you know, very perceptive in terms of... Uh, uh, their kind of uh, collaboration on a project such as this. Porish, I have to ask you, what brought you and Nemaida together? What was the reason you decided that you wanted to collaborate on a project like this? And did you at that point even know that the collaboration would take this shape and, uh, you know, spread over these last 20 years? Mm, about 20 years back, uh, I met Nemaida during his exhibition and I bought one of his photographs also which was from Kutch and you know we immediately reacted each other we started talking and he told me do you know that we come from both uh, both of us same place same district and both of us are Torian I asked him how do you know oh so it was very instinct and I could not believe that he was much senior. He was like my father's age. Uh, we, we had a lot of age difference as you all know. Then he said, you know, you travel so many places in this world and what do you see? I said, I see the places, people, culture, color, everything interact and I paint, capture them. He said, I want to capture them also with you. I said, I'll be delighted. I said, that means you would love to travel with me. 
He said, yes, I know that you travel the world. I have not really gone out of Bengal so much. I said, don't worry. We'll be together and traveling together. So that really the journey started. We had no plan the 20 years back about this book. About seven years back, one day I was sitting with him in his you know, house in near Kalighat. And he said, Paris, I have done some thousands of photographs, I think. And, and you know, whatever book I have seen of yours earlier, they are very grand. I think you'd be able to do the, you know, justify if you can capture, you know, make a book with all these photographs. And I think that would be my best uh, book. I said, Nimayada is done. Whatever you wish, it will be fulfilled because he was such a wonderful human being before, you know, a master photographer and a genius photographer. And he was just like a child. During 20 years, our journey was like a true child playing unknowingly and doing what we had no clue. We traveled from Bengal to Venice, all over India many, many times. You name any place we have traveled in every you know, season of the year, London, many places. And he captured me, not only I'm at work, in every moment he captured me. While I'm walking, unknowingly, I don't know when he has captured me. They were all black and white and uh, film, analog camera. I, mean, I used to bring the films from abroad. You know, lately, as you know, you don't get the films. And seven years back, we have started selecting the photographs and uh, said this one, no, this one, no, that one. It should be all fresh new photographs, not used in any other books. So we started selecting, then we started doing, I started scanning from Thamshon, from many, all best of everything, my ability I could do, I have done that. Then of course you are thinking that there should be a writer we would have loved to ask you, Kishore Dada, but just before this book, you have done one full book. <laughs> so we said, uh, we have to ask somebody who knows us long time and who knows us very well. Then we thought of Inadi. Uh, because as Inadi said that nearly 30 years we know each other, I don't know how many years, she knows Nimaida. Mm -hmm. So uh, it took long time to compile and then you know, at the end of the day, we were thinking that we should have a good publisher. So finally, God's grace, we could get Westland Amazon to publish. And of course, uh, you can see the book uh, done by Archana. And it was Nimai the last week he said that it would be wonderful that before I leave, I can see the book. It's very unfortunate he's no more today with us, but uh, we all pray for his soul, for the man. And uh, it was all, you know, planned, done, launched in March, first in Delhi and Kolkata, everything. But of course, we will do God's grace, uh, physical launch. But uh, before he left us, Four days back, the book could reach him. Ah, so it was, I was fortunate that when I got to know, at least it reached to him before he left. So very unfortunate, as, as I said. And uh, it was a remarkable journey, 20 years with him. Uh, we, 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 we did not know that we thought sometimes you are relative also. You know, like Mama Bhagna. Uh, it's amazing. What a man. I never said no to anything. Never. Yeah, you, you also said that, I mean, you'd got, uh, you traveled, of course, very frequently, uh, Parish. 
but Nemaida had at one stage also started keeping a packed suitcase uh, in his bedroom because he never knew when there would be a call saying, get on a flight tomorrow morning, we're going off to X, Y, Z. Um, Ina and I are both uh, very happy to join you on your travels anytime you like. Uh, we'll document whatever you say or do. We'll uh, travel with you. Uh, Ina, I'm coming back to you, and you were never the second choice. You were always the first choice. Uh, this is Porish just playing games with us. Um, when you do a book where there, is, there are photographs by someone like Nemaida, extraordinary works, uh, you know, spanning 20 years of an artist's journey. Uh, does the artist become the subject? Does the artist's art become the subject? How, how did you go about looking at the manner in which you would shape the conversation in the book? Uh, and how would you pattern it for the reader slash viewer? Wasn't that a huge challenge? Well, uh, interestingly enough, before this, Nimaida and I had worked together on Faces of Indian Art, wow. which, was, um, which was a very interesting project. Nimai Ghosh was photographing studios for the first time, and we had 52 artists, 50 years, uh, you know, that kind of a span, uh, which was being covered by him, where he personally went into studios and shot artists at work. So when Manjeet and I had commissioned that project, this was sometime in the mid nineties, uh, we had invited him to Delhi and over a period of time, we got to know him and we got to know the way his mind was working, you know, because earlier on his commitment was to cinema, his commitment was to theater. He himself was a theater actor and, you know, he's documented Bengali theater in a very, very, uh, very thoroughly. Cinema, of course, Ray, Ghatak, Sen, Topun Sinha. He's done all that. But where art is concerned, Nimaida and I worked together earlier on. There, it was a question of uh, shooting uh, artists when they work. But it was, you know, we were giving him about six pages for an artist. It was only once in a way that he met someone like M.F. Hussain who said to him, sit down and sit, you know, sit and watch me paint and I'll start with, you know, before your eyes and give you a complete work by the time I finish and, and gift it to you or whatever. But in the case of Parish, what happened was that they were, they were collaborating. Is this a book about photographs or is it a book about art or is it the book about an artist? I cannot say, perhaps all. And of course, this is a book where Nimai Ghosh is documenting Parish Maiti. But it is also equally a book where Nimai Ghosh has put his heart and soul into the making of this project. And see, if you're working here, if the whole, the entire book is about one artist, yet there is no fatigue when you look at the works. You know, each page tells you a different story. Each frame is so different. And what Nimai Ghosh has achieved with this is that when he's creating a frame here, earlier on in the case of Ray, he was, he was documenting uh, a director, but here he had turned director himself. He was you know, deciding what kind of a shot he should take, which angle, which camera, all of that. And he, you know, he worked in a way, he, he, was, he was almost invisible, a tall man like him just disappeared. You didn't know where my wash was. I mean, somewhere, you know, around you, he'd be there taking photographs quietly. And uh, only later you would get to know when you, saw the, when you saw the work. I found it very interesting because there are these beautiful images in, uh, in Shantini Ketan, for instance, where he's sitting inside a, a tea stall and the chaiwala is making uh, tea and samosas and whatever. So Nibai Kosh is inside, Parish is outside, through a screen of smoke, there is this silhouette of this man, and by his feet, there is a dog. These little, uh, these little touches are Nibai Kosh, you know, it's not about just shooting a person, but it's shooting that entire, uh, you know, that entire moment that comes to life. In Venice, when he was shooting, for instance, you know, the canal, everything was, was right there in your face. And 
So that was very interesting for me to see because it wasn't like earlier on, it was basically about portraits, largely about portraits. In Polish Mighty's case, in, in the case of this book, he shoots, of course, the portrait of the, of the artist, but also, you know, the backdrop, the background and everything happening. You see him painting, you see him exercising, you see him drinking tea, you see him walking. And, and visually, this whole, you know, it's, it's, it's the, the documentation of a life which comes alive so vividly. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's uh, fairly interesting. Uh, when you look at the book, etc., you realize that this is perhaps uh, an extremely unique book in the kind of photography uh, undertaken where a single artist has been covered over 20 years. I don't think there's ever uh, been a project or a venture uh, of this nature where a, where a single artist has been documented uh, in this, um, on this particular scale, uh, which, I mean, uh, it's, it's rare that anybody should be documented over a period like this. Uh, also, uh, when I first started looking at the book, etc., one saw images of Porish, and you see that, uh, you know, some backgrounds are familiar, some are less uh, uh, familiar, etc., and you start looking for captions, uh, and you realize that, uh, you know, uh, the photographs are not captioned. You don't know whether this is in London or Venice or Spain or Norway or Shantiniketa or Shimla, etc., somewhere. Uh, initially, you wonder why that is the case, till you realize that this is not a travel book. This is not a book about places. Exactly. It's a book about a person. And uh, of course, the background is important, etc. But the background should not become the subject, etc. Which I thought was actually very clever. One would have normally done, uh, you know, uh, uh, mentioned the names of the places, etc. So whoever decided on that, thank you for that. Uh, Parish. Yes. And I've seen you painting. Uh, yes. I've seen the way you work. Yes. Uh, you're very, very intense when you're painting. I think everything, you become oblivious to everything. You're very present as a person. Uh, you're very conscious about the way you organize your day, how you eat, what you do, uh, you know, the hours when you will uh, exercise, when you will work, etc. All of that is a very well thought out, planned uh, day. Uh, but you become fairly detached when you're painting. Uh, everything fades away and you're present in that moment only where your paints, your paper, your canvas, etc. are. However, when you're painting in a very public space and you're painting in Venice or you're painting in Shimla and there are people, there are tourists, there are crowds, uh, there are curious people who want to see what's happening, etc. Uh, all of this is happening, which I'm, I'm surprised you're not distracted by. On top of which, you have a photographer who's present, who's documenting you. What is that moment like for you when you're painting, when you're surrounded by people, and when there is a photographer of the stature of Nemaida uh, present who's documenting this? What does it feel for you? Whenever I have painted, let's say in Piccadilly Circus, or in Varanasi Ghats, or in St. Marcos Square in Venice, I always thought when, I, when I'm painting, I, and you were right, that I get lost. Yeah. I don't know what is there. I don't have any preconceived ideas. I completely get involved with my art. And I feel I'm in my studio where nobody is there. When I paint, there is nobody. So I have never believed that I am sitting here. There are hundreds of people watching or Nimaida is photographing, then it will be very conscious effort. Mm. And this is very interesting, as you said, that I paint in a very short time. But that time, I am fully thousand percent conscious about that what I'm doing, about my painting, my color. And as you know, now, I, even and I, uh, let's say put red, red means the red. There is no hesitation. Blue means blue. So I have nothing in my mind, nothing, no idea what is happening rest of the world. Once I have finished, I know that basically watercolor when I do, like 
hundred percent is done. Not that I will take it to my studio and because I always believe the whole world is my studio. So wherever I paint, I can paint in the kitchen, I can paint in on the boat, I can paint, I can do sketches everywhere, and that's been going on last more than forty years. So I have no issues. Even I am sometimes I saw the cow has just really you know cross my painting like this. And you know somebody said, "Oh my goodness, he's gone," but you know he's really just gone. Dog, stray dogs are just going around. I have no clue. Sometimes it comes in my painting, in a form. So I never, uh, even today when I paint, I really get lost. I forget the rest of the world. What is happening? Because until and unless I give my total heart and soul, my mind, my all senses. Then I cannot really take out because after you know when I start, I'm started. Then once we talk each other, the art, the piece of art, and me, and art dominates me. I have realized not that I dominate, that I want to make this. Art says that you do this. I'm like a servant. So, and that's why when sometimes I finish. I I say my goodness, did I you know want to do this, or it has just happened, and that's why I cannot repeat and I cannot capture. I don't know how when I get lost. This is quite extraordinary. Uh, I I remember uh, uh, you know this is several years back, and I don't know if you will uh, have a memory of this. There was an installation uh, that was being inaugurated. Uh, in a public place in Delhi, and uh, there was a set of photographs, Timaida's photographs, uh, uh, which had been used in the background, uh, a set of them, etc. And the promoter, uh, who had uh, commissioned the installation, bought the set of photographs and took them away. Uh, so, I would have to ask you, when you're looking at these photographs in your book, they're very much works of art as well. Yes. Uh, very much. How do we? Huh, so how do we separate the uh, fact that this is a book about an artist? There are his um, works of art in it, and the photographer's uh, images, which are also works of art uh, somewhere. Is there a distinction, or is there a way of looking which is unique in a book like this, where both come together and merit, and there is really no difference other than the fact that one is black and white, and your works are extremely vibrant. It is actually it was a bridge between two artists. You cannot sep separate them. Uh, it is like without left and right, you cannot combine a complete thing. It was just like that. It was really a bridge, not only with our art, with our spirit, our you know the tendency of everything in life, our approach to life, our looking at the things at the life. and it was completely like two soul you know march together like a sangam so you cannot differentiate and sometimes he says he said that he used to say oh my goodness i don't know why also i eat the same thing <laughs> yes is and that's why you know as i said in the beginning that we were like two child who doesn't have any preconceived ideas thoughts thinking what will we do what will be done you know because when we were taking this photographs we had no clue 20 years back we will come out with this book i so think it was the collaboration comes through very beautifully in the way the book has melded together uh ina what i'm going to ask you a slightly cheeky question uh which is you were working with these two maestros uh two extremely well established personalities uh, an artist and a photographer uh very well known very well celebrated not just in india but around the world uh, as we know uh so, but you're also working with two people who are very compassionate uh, we knew both namaida we know uh, porish etc they're very soft they're very caring they're very generous uh, human beings uh but as artists photographers who are Are totally in control of what they do. They also have their own egos, and therefore, 
their own uh, sense of what is right, what is wrong, what is correct, what perhaps is not, etc. When you were working on this book with two compassionate but also very strong people, what was that experience like? You know, Kishore, we were friends. What makes this project work so well is the fact that three of us, mind you, we are, we are all very different as people. And uh, Nimaida is much older, I'm older than Parish. We come from different backgrounds, but somewhere, you know, we communicate, we remain friends. I've known both Parish and Nimaida for a very long time. And uh, our conversations often that I have actually recorded has been over a period of time, but normally both of them gave so much of respect to each other. But Nimaida was so much older, of course, he was very, if he chose to be, and I've seen that, extremely arrogant, he knew exactly, you know, that, you know, what he deserved as an artist. And Parish, of course, but the kind of respect and affection they had for each other was remarkable. So when I interviewed them and I did speak to them separately and together, they spoke the same language. Parish, when he spoke about his work, he would always, you know, mention the fact that Nimai Ghosh was important in this project. Nimaida was documenting it and how much he respected him and allowed him to do what he wished. Nimaida would always respect the fact that there is this young man who's achieved so much. You know, he has struggled, but he, here he is, and this is what he has done for himself. And that respect would, would be there for Parish as well. And I've written about it. Mm. That came across, you know, so often that I really didn't, I, I sometimes would have thought that maybe, you know, artists tend, you know, ego is, is, is very much a part of their mental makeup. But here were two people where ego did not matter. They were very comfortable in each other's companies. And of course, we all shared a sense of humor and we had, uh, you know, this similar love for food. So sometimes our conversations would be over a meal and certainly in Nimai Ghosh's house, Nimaida's house in Kalighat Road was a center, it was a hub where we would sit and, and chat and you wouldn't even know how time passed. I had taken friends over and, you know, I still remember I had taken Sanjana Kapoor one day and he said, you know, I have a surprise for you. I have a photograph of Shashi Kapoor. And, uh, you know, so from, from early days, once uh, I remember seeing images from City of Joy, uh, you know, image of Shabana Azmi, Om Puri. And, you know, going there was like, you know, it was like Ali Baba's cave. You didn't know what would emerge. There would be these images. But somewhere, because I think I was close to him, I had that, you know, that relationship with him where I could tell him things and there was trust. So, you know, with, with Parish's, uh, with, with this project, when he shared images and often we would talk about what to take, what not to do, how are we going to proceed, all of that, it was a joint decision. I would speak to him, I would speak to Parish after that, the three of us would get together. This was possible only because, you know, the three of us took a call on everything together. So I have to ask you, therefore, when you're working on a project such as this, where uh, the, uh, the, uh, the people involved are such close friends, etc., does that make the task of writing easier or more difficult? Uh, certainly more difficult because you have to do justice to this friendship. You have to justify uh, the trust. And therefore, it is, it is important. And also because a lot of the conversations between us is in Bengali. So uh, it, my task was also when I was writing was not only to document, but to mentally translate. And when I was making notes was to, you know, from Bengali to English and then, then quickly jot down points because the conversations mostly were so, so interesting. But Nimaida, he would tell you about his theater days and how he had to sit on the 10th th row and take his photographs. How about the, you know, about the time when he first went to the sets of Gupi Gai and Bhagavai. But my, uh, my worry was this, that, you know, there it was a question of shooting an illusion. You know, with Ray, it was, uh, it was a set beautifully lit and uh, everything was just so. With Parish, there was no such, uh, there was no such arrangement. It was all impromptu. I mean, he could be sitting in Shimla or he could be, 
sitting on the Hawa bridge. There would be people coming, going, all of that, hullabaloo. So how on earth is he going to make it work? But somehow I think, you know, in the making of this whole project, he began his career shooting in a eye with Ray, but he became the inner eye himself in the course of his life. Is that what I, I mean, that is what I feel, you know? Yeah, I, think, I think that's very beautifully said. I think the way uh, yes. Nemai would just uh, become a part of the background and let his subject uh, come through. Uh, I am, uh, you know, uh, going to ask you, uh, Harish, uh, Namaida was uh, fairly possessive about his uh, photographs, the kind of pictures he took, etc. Uh, had a very sharp uh, selector's eye, etc. So when we worked with, on the Sati G3 uh, project, he wanted to see the photographs we were going to be using in the books, etc. And in the second book that we did with, uh, you know, uh, faces and facets, in fact, he did the selection of the actual images that would go into the book. When you were uh, doing the selection for Portrait of an Artist in the World, uh, what was that experience of actually uh, uh, choosing the uh, photographs? Did he guide you in any way? How did you do the selection? Uh, how did the ultimate or the final selection come to you? It was, it was very, very spontaneous. Not that he has ever, you know, uh, uh, really recommended that you do this. Neither I have said anything. As Inadi said that we had so much of love and affection and respect each other. Maybe he said this. Then I said, oh, that's fine. Maybe I said this. He said, oh, that's wonderful. So we... Both of us were very positive about this and never really said that, oh, no, 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 this is I own like, this is light is bad or all this. So because I knew that he's a great photographer, he knew me. So that's why we have never really, you know, interrupted each other, never crossed anybody's anything. And we, as I said that when there are two child, they have no such ego, no such preconceived ideas, thoughts, or anything in life. So they are, we're just, you know, really 20 years played together uh, as, you know, he was like my father and I was like a son. But we had never, never a single minute, even not even selecting a photographer. Maybe we were sitting and eating something. He would say, no, I will not eat this. Yeah. Or you like this. Everything anything we were satisfied and we were content fantastic uh, well thank you ina thank you uh, parish fantastic <laughs> conversation we could continue etc but fortunately we have lots thank of you, questions thank you kishore sir thank you inadi uh, uh, no we are we not leaving you yet parish we have these questions coming in and reasonably predictably uh, a very uh, large number of questions seem to be based around the whole idea of this uh, public health emergency that we're undergoing, uh, the kind of work that is being done in this time, and whether you as an artist are addressing any of these issues in the kind of work that you're doing now. Yes, in the beginning of our lockdown, I painted a painting landscape where I have depicted that after that dark night, the light comes. So we all have to have patience. We'll pass this night and the day will begin. Fresh, beautiful day. So that was, you know, some inner urge and inner philosophy I have depicted in that painting. Then later on, I made another painting that the during this uh, pandemic, you know, the, the people they are really, you know, involved and serving the world. To be to those people, I have made a painting. Like we were sitting at home, uh, doing painting, but not really come, go, you know, went to the battlefield and serving people. We were quiet, we were at home, we were in lockdown, but they were really in the battlefield. So to salute them, I made another painting. Then I made some paintings, 
lot of paintings just for myself not thinking to have an exhibition not thinking to give it to this one or that one and they had some kind of uh not some kind that the positive that this as we know that every negative thing has is same and equal positive so they were all very positive approach to life that be positive be you know courageous we will all pass this and we will have a beautiful world so with that context i painted during last 7 8 months but not really too much of that direct uh illustration that i am doing a you know art to art like this now i am i have just started a big painting and where that is one language is this issue where the whole world i have combining in one canvas and with one issue wonderful uh we know that uh, nimai ghosh was uh, an accidental photographer at least in the sense that uh, as a theater person he found uh, or came upon uh, an abandoned camera in a taxi picked it up got the opportunity to visit uh, satyajit ray's sets and started photography uh, but i have some questions coming in here for you parish which are uh, what were the materials that you started with when you started your journey and what was your approach to your work uh, and your art when uh, when the whole aspect of uh, starting your practice as an artist began started my life as a career at the age of 7 i started playing with clay doing clay modelings Uh, making toys selling them in you know many places anyway that's not the thing but after that it it became watercolor because that was the easiest thing that i could really get a piece of paper and small tubes and just one or two brushes and of course later on i found that this is the most difficult medium the challenge is there so that remain my heart and soul of course later on oil acrylic sculpture again came came in a very big way very dominant way as you know my sculpture installation are huge oh, and then mix media like combining with all kinds of uh, like charcoal watercolor you know acrylic and all sorts of thing even some materials i have used you know for to create the texture and various kind of papers to paste each other not on each other to create the texture so i now really even then during nimaidas like sometimes i am doing watercolor sometimes oil sometimes this so it was not the medium was the factor it was the factor to create a piece of art in any medium or any form uh, you you picked up the camera yourself you taken photographs Uh, you enjoy photography that's right uh, i we, started see you exhibit as a photographer i yes. know you've done once a uh, small show uh, but do we see you stepping out as a photographer uh i did not uh, small show many big shows uh but i have learned many years back that i cannot keep my two legs on two boats Mm-hmm. that art is so fast probably i need one more life what i have in my mind to you know transform them into my art so if it was in our hands we'd grant that to you prarish because it's impossible that to do because so much like uh, to really discover sometimes i think that i why there is no 48 hours for a day for me <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. I mean, some of us who know you well and know what you pack into a day, we're totally amazed by it. Uh, in our last question, coming to you, um, in this time of lockdown, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, when you're working from home again without distractions, etc., what has it meant for you as a writer? Are you doing in-depth work, researching? Are there projects that you're working on that you'd like to share with us? 
Well, yes, first of all, of course, was this book itself. You know, it was supposed to have been launched. We were almost there, but we produced this book in the lockdown and we've launched it. I hope more people can pick it up and, and see what we have done. So this was one major project. I have also uh, done fundraising for Ram Fun and uh, worked on that for about, uh, you know, about two and a half, three months when Ram Fun hit Calcutta. So that was a project I was actively involved with. Of course, I'm researching. I'm, and I find it very peaceful at home to sit and to, to read and to spend time uh, writing without any distractions, without travel. I, as you know, travel a fair amount. But uh, it's been a good time to plan what I'm going to do in the, in the next couple of years. And there are some projects that I'm already working on. Uh, there are books on senior artists, but at this point, I think what I need to do is just, you know, sort notes out, sort my uh, thinking so that, you know, by the time this lifts, I shall be able to get back to my travels. Because for me personally, all my work is related to the fact that I like talking to people, you know, face to face. I don't like, you know, sending them questionnaires and talking on the phone. For me, it's very important, even with this book, Parish and I met with masks and maintaining social distance, but we met, you know, discussing how we are going to launch this book only, and that could happen only because we met face to face. Similarly, uh, once this is done, there are these artists I have been working with in the last couple of years. I will go back, meet them, and then restart our conversations. But quickly, Kishore, I wanted to tell you one thing about Nimaida. And that is that, you know, when it came to Nimai Kosh's memory, it, he was absolutely brilliant. You know, we were talking about this book. He remembered every single image. I mean, and he has taken some iconic images. Others worked for newspapers and they were looking at headline pictures that would make it for the headlines. Nimai Kosh worked on images that would last forever, you know, posterity would remember his work. But the most amazing thing, and I saw him weeks before he passed, was his memory, that he remembered every image that he had taken. So that... I, I, I would second that. Mm -hmm. I mean, in all my conversations with him, I would totally second that. Yeah. Uh, and if Nemaida was, uh, of course, uh, Horatius Boswell, Instagram is your Boswell. We all follow you on Instagram and we know how you travel, etc., etc. So. Uh, we share that part of your life as well. Thank you. This has been really, really fun. This has been really fantastic. Big hug to you, uh, Parish, and a big hug to much. you, Tina, and over to you, Sanjoy. Thank you for having us here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jaipur Lit Fest, and especially Sanjoy Ra, to hosting this wonderful, you know, launch and program. And I'm very proud that how you made this joyful lit fest global and popular all over the world. Thank you, Parishna. Thank you, Inapuri. Thank you, Kishore Singh. That was an absolutely brilliant conversation. And you, I certainly have this aching urge to be able to see the book. None of you showed even yeah. one photograph from this fabulous book. And, and for those of you who don't know, Nimai, Nimai Ghosh is truly a legendary photographer, uh, Satyajit Ray's photographer, and much of his work is seen to be as art. And his work also is collected uh, pretty much like Paresh Maiti's work by uh, collectors and museums across the world. They're rare, they're insightful. And as Ina said, it in itself is art. It is an absolutely stunning, uh, collector's item, and I do hope that each of you who are watching uh, are able to access this book with uh, Ina Puri's very beautiful, evocative writing. And I think both Kishore, Kishore said something very specific. He talked about empathy, and that really comes through uh, the book. Uh, so once again, Ina Puri, Paresh Maiti, uh, Kishore Singh, thank you for that beautiful conversation. Many congratulations for this book. And I'm sure Nimaida, wherever he is, uh, with his, uh, with his, with his, uh, with his cigarette, and uh, you know, in his honor, uh, cheers. cheers. And uh, bless us. 
in inapuri parish maithi i'm surprised that you were talking about meeting together in person with masks what happened to the elish march and the chingri march and uh, i mean are, are you saying that two people came together in this world without an iota of food un not believable unless <laughs> your mask don't, don't worry and i am getting you please you know whatsapp me your address tomorrow personalized book will be at your place Yes. Thank you, thank you so Tomorrow. much, Arista. My hand, I, don't worry. Please, I will sign it for you. Thank you so very much, Raja. This was. Thank you, Kishor Dada. Thank you, Inadi. Okay. Once thank again, you. very nice. Thank you. It all. was wonderful conversation. Thank you all, thank and you. thank you all for being such a great audience. We're sorry we couldn't send all the questions out to Kishor Singh to mm -hmm. ask of our speakers today. Uh, we just ran out of time. Uh, we do hope you enjoyed this conversation and we'll log back on at 8.30 p.m. for our next session on JLF's Brave New World, The Tribulations of Trial by Media, Kota Nilima, Paranjoy Gua Thakurta, Pushpesh Pant, Sevanti Nainan, in conversation with Indrani Bakchi. Sensational and often toxic coverage by electronic and print media interferes with due process and judicial inquiry. In conversation with Indrani Bakchi, Reputed journalists and media persons discuss the root causes of this criminal irresponsibility and the ethical and legal framework required to contain and correct this very dangerous trend. This will be at 8.30 p.m. And meanwhile, do remember to block your dates for JLF North America and continue to watch, participate and be inspired and informed with brilliant sessions that will be presented across our four editions with Nobel laureates, Man Booker, Pulitzer, Commonwealth Award-winning writers. This is at JLF Colorado, November 8th to the 11th and November 15th to the 18th. JLF Houston, November 21st to the 22nd. And JLF New York, November 23rd, 24th. And we conclude with JLF Toronto, November 27th to the 29th. So block your dates. See you at 8.30 p.m. Thank <laughs> you.